Hello friend, hope this finds you well. Maybe you're taking a break between Christmas and New Year's. I certainly am to read more books. So speak of books, let's talk about my favorite books of 2021. And I would love to hear your favorites of 2021. Nonfiction, fiction, and why. So make sure you place a comment under this video on YouTube or Facebook. I would love to hear what was on your list and why you like them so much. So I chose seven books here. I try to read about 30 books a year, and I chose some pretty dense topics this year to study. Childhood trauma, generational trauma, deeper concepts of spirituality. So I'm gonna share the seven books with you and tell you why I love these books so much. Number one, it's a book that I most like to read every single year called Love Without Conditions. I know you see here um, a picture of Christ. So the subtitle of this book is Reflections of the Christ Mind. Now, let me be clear. This book has nothing to do with Christianity, has nothing to do with dogmatic religions. This is a true spiritual book based on the reflections of the Christ mind. So I'm going to let you use your imagination in you know, and exp maybe explore this book. Just to give an idea, I tend to highlight my, my, uh, my favorite sentences in the book. And this book is not highlighted at all because every single sentence, every single paragraph of this book were deep. So that's why I'm gonna be reading this book once a year. Amazing philosophies here. And it's explored by the mystics, the mystics who study the work of Jesus Christ. Not what the religion tells us about Jesus, but what the mystics say, say about Jesus Christ. Incredible book. Another one here, not in so much, as, well, there's some spirituality here, but this book, Return of the Bird Tribes. This book is going to require a mystic and a magic mindset. Ken Carey is an author who got very sick and he locked himself in the cabin in the woods for, I don't know, seven days, ten days. And he started channeling, he started getting downloads of all the stories that he shares in about four or five books. This is definitely my favorite, Return of the Tribes, of the Bird Tribes. Again, if you like magic and mysticism, ancestry stories, and many stories that might be related to what's going on in history today, I recommend this book, hands down, one of my favorite books this year. Emergence by Barbara Marks Hubar. The shift from ego to essence. Barbara was a visionary. She had a very scientific mind. She had a very, um, she was devoted to her spirituality. She was extremely intuitive and just a woman in tune and say was well, because we lost her a couple of years ago so the shift from ego to essence she talks about the concept of becoming a universal human like a human who shows up with his or her gifts and talents and we work together for the progress of our planet we work in integration of our planet and literally we work together to create a new earth incredible concept Incredible visionary, truly love the book. From emergency from ego to essence. Speaking of the essence, Diamond Heart, book one by A.H. Almas. This is another book that I will read every single year. Book one. This is a book about our essence, how we all born in our essence, we were, we were born complete with all the qualities that we basically spend our whole life seeking externally. It's an incredible book. I'm not going to read a lot of the quotes, but I need to read you a quote of this book because it's really, really, really powerful. So he's talking about here the, the essence that we lost in childhood. And this is part of our healing to recover those essence. The fundamental thing that happened in the greatest calamity and not there was, it's not that there was not enough love or support. 
the greater calamity, which was caused by the first calamity, is that you lost connection to your essence. This is much more important than whether your mother or father loved you or not. I, re I read this quote to a lot of my clients in this healing journey. So if you're interested in understanding more what happened in childhood, understand a little more about trauma without getting too heavy in the topic of trauma itself, but just understand what happens and how we lose ourselves in childhood in order to feel attached to our parents, to our caretakers, and we give up parts of ourselves, develop new personalities, and again, that's part of our healing to recover the essence. Diamond Heart, love that book. Next one here, Lost Connections by Johan Hari. Lost Connections, it's a book about depression. Why are you depressed and how to find hope? Now, I'm not somebody who suffers of depression. Yeah, I have bouts of depression because depression is, a, is an emotional state. Um, I love this book because Johan Hari is a journalist. He's not a biased scientist. And he interviewed the top experts in the world about this topic of depression. And in this book, he shares a philosophy that I believe around depression and anxiety. That depression and anxiety, and this might challenge some of you, depression and anxiety are not chemical imbalances in your brain. They're not going to be cured and fixed with a pill. Even though there are times that somebody might need to take some medication to function and get out of the dark cloud of depression and anxiety. And yet, lost connections, as the name says, a lot of it has to do with anxiety and depression. It's our loss of connection. I just spoke about lost connection with the essence. That's a part of it. And also loss of connection with tribes, with our community. It's an excellent book. He illustrates many good stories here. Highly recommend if you experience depression or you're close to somebody who experienced depression or even if you're just interested in understanding why there's such a high epidemic of uh, depression and anxiety, especially in our culture. Great informative book. I saved the best ones here for last. Book about generational trauma. Help us to understand how we inherit beliefs, patterns, traumas from three, four, five generations ago. Now science can prove that. I think it's science goes up to four generations. I believe there is much further than that. So, um, excuse me here. I am home resting with a cold. So excuse me here. It didn't start with you by Mark Wallen. Excellent book about how inherit family trauma shapes who we are and how to end the cycle. That's the part I'm most interested in. How each one of us can play a big part on ending this cycle of passing these beliefs, these struggles, the survival uh, philosophies that we inherit from our grand grandparents and even before that. We have the ability to stop, and especially if you have children, I think this is a must read. So you don't keep passing this inherited trauma to your children or to your grandchildren. It didn't start with you. And the last one, hands down one of the best books I ever read, not just this year, called My Grandmother's Hands by Resma Menakin, Rationalized Trauma and the Pathway to mending our hearts and, your, and our bodies. He talks about trauma in the white bodies, trauma in the black bodies, and why there's so much violence and still abuse from the white to the blacks. And he shares a lot of embodiment practices here to guide us back into our bodies because you know trauma happens in the body, not in the brain. Of course, the brain is going to be changed by trauma. The brain is going to adapt, be rewired, and trauma needs to be healed in the body. We need to embody. That's why in my healing practice here with my clients, I help them to reconnect with their emotions, reconnect with their bodies so they can release that trauma. So 
It Didn't Start With You talks more about your own family, how you inherit Trump from your own lineage. This book, The Grandmother's Hand, talks about historical trauma and how today we still living the consequences of the trauma they start in Europe in the colonization of England, Portugal, France, Italy where there used to be so much violence. It was brutality, right? Women were killed if they're mystics. Men were killed on the streets if they disagree with the church. So there's a lot of violence, lands taken over and what happened to the natives as well. So this helps us to understand better what's going on today and why this topic is complex and yet healing begins in each one of us. That's why I consider healing a necessity, not a luxury, because it's the only way we can play our part and end the trauma, the, the trauma that we see happening every single day in our society. So those are my seven favorite books of this year. Share with, share with me, post below. What were your favorites? I would love to know. So stay tuned for more book reviews and Happy New Year. I'll see you very soon. Mwah.